introducing myself. My name is Jonas Spivak. Uh, I was born in Manhattan, but I moved to Vermont when I was in third grade, so I'm sort of like a Vermonter. Both my kids were born in Vermont, so that helps that way. Um, my wife and I own a second generation family business down in Bennington. I grew up in Shaftesbury. Um, I've also been serving on the Shire's Regional uh, Commission for probably going on 12 years now. And first of all, I want to look around the room and say thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. The majority of people who attended the first summit came back today. And that just, in my mind, speaks to some of the love and dedication that so many of us share for this beautiful part of Vermont where we live. Um, I mentioned, I think it's worthwhile to mention what the mission of the Shires is, and I'm going to read it to you. Uh, created by the state of Vermont in the 1980s, our mission is to use the combined energies and assets of the North and South Shires of Bennington County, the only Vermont County to have two Shires. And I'm going to pause there for a second and say, Shires, what's with that, right? Isn't that where the hobbits live, right? Well, actually, this is a Vermont quirk. If you live in, if, there, if you have a town that has a county seat in it, that would be traditionally called a Shire town. So, it's sort of a Vermont quirkiness to have Shire towns. We're the only Vermont county that has two Shire towns, and that sort of evolved into us having a North Shire and South Shire. Um, we're, let's see, we, it's the only Vermont county to have two Shires, which I gave that away. Uh, in order to collaborate with state, public, and private sectors in the promotion of Vermont's southwest corner, the Shires of Vermont, to support the Vermont quality of life, its cultural heritage, and historic promise of independence for its residents, regional, e regional economic development, respect for the natural environment and the arts, and cooperation between the North, Greater Manchester area, and South, Greater Bennington area. And it's interesting because most of the work we've traditionally done as an RMO has been out of the area. Uh, stuff that the local people don't even know about. It's been most, mostly been focused on getting people to come to Vermont. Uh, we have done some local things, uh, most notably the Shires Vermont Byway, uh, the creation of brochure, local brochure information racks throughout the region. Um, and then most recently, we have taken a much more obvious local role in the wake of the collapse of the Manchester Chamber. Uh, as part of that, we, along with many others, have been partnering together to do some work to help out, things like temporary welcome centers. Uh, we've been working with the town. We've been working with the, uh, the emerging uh, business group in Manchester. We've been working with Mountain Media and others uh, to try to help things along in the interim. But part of what that illustrated to us is that there's both a challenge here and also perhaps an opportunity. And that led us to thinking we need to have a first summit. And at that first summit, we really tackled the idea of well, what are the big picture items that we can address? What are the possible opportunities that we have in, in front of us as a result of this? We're going to have a brief recap of what happened at the first summit. But two overall themes sort of emerged. One is that uh, we want to do regional uh, marketing for the area, but it's not 100% decided what exact, what, what exact form that takes, and that we know that there's a lot of work to be done on that. We also came to a consensus that there is a desire to work as a region for economic development. And in fact, that is the best way to think about economic development. And not even regionally, but super regionally. So for example, getting our own house in order here in the Shires, and then coming together, perhaps, with Wyndham County to form a larger Southern Vermont economic development zone. And it was as a result of that, we decided to hold, and also from you folks who said, we need to keep working on this. There was a desire and a consensus to keep working on it. And that is what drove us to the second summit. For the second summit, we decided to partner with the most obvious choice for regional economic development, and that's the BCIC and BCRC. Uh, and that's really where we stand at this point. And I just want to give a chance for Bill Colvin. He's the assistant director for the BCIC to come up and say a few words as well. Thank you, Jonah. So I also was born and raised in Shaftesbury. Um, I'm ninth generation uh, Vermonter, so almost also almost a Vermonter. Uh, my family was uh, one of the first families to settle in North Bennington. So uh, long tradition, um, deep roots here for sure. Very passionately about the area. As Jonah mentioned, um, most of you are familiar with the fact that the Bennington County Regional Commission, where I'm an assistant director, has recently done a joint venture with the Bennington County Industrial Corporation, such that BCRC is now the functioning staff on behalf of the Regional Development Corporation. Myself and Jonathan Cooper, uh, my colleagues staff all of BCIC's Regional <coughs> Development Corporation efforts. 
We attended the first Shires meeting, uh, summit meeting, as Jonah mentioned. Coming out of that meeting, uh, I think we all felt there was some consensus about who should be doing regional economic development. The kind of blocking and tackling, workforce development, entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, development, making sure the appropriate infrastructure is in place, all of those things which aren't frankly quite as fun and as sexy as marketing. I think there was pretty good consensus that uh, BCRC, BCIC uh, was the appropriate entity to be doing that. Following up on the work that uh, Wayne Granquist led with the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone, there was a legislative appropriation to BCRC to begin to build uh, regional economic development capacity in the Bennington region, North Shire and South Shire, bringing together a group that could focus on long-term strategic planning, ultimately in conjunction with uh, the Wyndham region to identify our, the unique assets that we can build off of to create long-lasting economic development changes uh, in our region. And that's our particular uh, interest, which you'll see as we kind of separate um, this afternoon into economic development and marketing tasks, and then ultimately come back together down the road uh, to bring all of those pieces uh, back together. So we thought it made sense to uh, co-host uh, this second meeting with the Shires RMO. You now have the three uh, regional organizations, the regional marketing organization, the regional planning commission, and the regional development corporation, along with the chamber, um, kind of all uh, partnering on this afternoon's effort. So uh, thank you. We look forward to um, working with you this afternoon and uh, continuing <coughs> throughout this effort. I'm just going to give you a very brief outline on the rest of the meeting. Uh, we're going to come back shortly and hear a presentation from BCIC regarding local planning and economic development, next steps for creating strategies to guide our long-term growth. Then we're going to have a very short break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to break into two groups, one focused on economic development, the other fo focused on regional marketing. Uh, we're going to identify some initial tasks and create a structure for, for continuing that work. And we'll get you out of here by... 430? Yeah. 430. Matt? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Matt Harrington with the Bennington Area Chamber of Commerce. I think I met most of you at, at our last uh, Shire Summit. Um, I, too, was born in Vermont, right in Southern Vermont Medical Center. Fun fact there. Um, and, uh, and, and moved away and, and had great experiences out in New York and college and that sort of thing. And, and yet, you know, obviously, as we've, I think we've all come accustomed to, Vermont comes a calling and, and you have a great passion for the, the state that I grew up in and, and really some, um, some great potential. Uh, and I say that as a young millennial person, uh, which, which may come as contrarian because I think we all look at the statistics and it looks like all my generation is moving out. Um, and, and I beg to differ that and I think there's great opportunity here. Um, I think, uh, you know, so, uh, if you read anything about innovation, they say innovate on the fringe of where others aren't. That's where innovation actually happens. So don't innovate at the center where everything is, i.e. Boston, New York, Washington. You're just going to be in a big pool of everybody else that has a lot of talent. Uh, if you really want to do some change and do some good in the world, go to those fringe areas where they need your innovation, they need your mind the most. And so when I talk to millennials about uh, Vermont specifically and Bennington and the Shires and Manchester, that's usually my pitch is if you want to have unfettered access to Bernie Sanders or uh, Dick Sears or uh, Jonah, you can have all those. You can have all those things. My cell phone number is posted. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I think that that, uh, that galvanizes a lot of millennials to think that they can have a place and they can have a meaning in this world and you don't need to go to New York or Washington or anything like that. You can do it right here. And among, among the, the green mountains and the beautiful uh, outdoor activity that, that Vermont brings as well. Um, so that's my short introduction. I'll kind of come back. Um, we're going to do some review of, of the agenda, uh, some meeting roles. Uh, my background is, was actually in training and development and staff development and organizational management before I took the, the chamber role. So I'm that good cop, bad cop person that says we're going to add some structure and process to this meeting. Uh, and, and it's not because I think you're all children. Uh, it's because that's what gets the work done is when we can all agree on and come to consensus about things that moves the boat forward and moves the, the ship forward. So um, one is 
Jonah just kind of outlined the agenda. Is everybody in agreement with that agenda? That sounds like a good idea. We'll get you out of here by 4.30. Sunny already has a question. Oh, no, I'm agreeing. Oh, okay. Good. Um, so, so that's the agenda for today. And then meeting roles, and, and these aren't too difficult. Uh, Jonah, myself, and John will be the facilitator. And what that means for us is we're much more about making sure the process flows. Uh, everything from how our conversations are going at our tables, uh, how that time flows, and making sure to get you out of here on time. So we're more concerned about process than perhaps the content. Does that make sense? You guys are our content providers. So at tables, uh, as we facilitate those tables, we're going to make sure that everybody has a chance to speak. We're going to pull people in who may not have had a chance to speak. Uh, and we're going to put people in kind of queues if you've raised your hand too many times. So uh, that's part of our role as facilitators. Do we have a timekeeper or somebody that wants to volunteer? They love to kind of be nitpicking and, and, and concerned about the time, and they, they need to get out of here. Anybody want to do that? I'll volunteer somebody. I'm not good at it. I'll do it. Thank you, Sunny. Thanks, Sunny. Again, agenda is pretty straightforward. Um, like Jonah said, we're going to spend the first half. Uh, BCIC, BCRC are going to kind of update us about economic development uh, and what's going on, and then we're going to spend the second half breaking up into two main groups, as was. Kind of, we came to consensus last time when we met. One was on um, really marketing and how does that fit within tourism, how does that fit within economic development and are we even leaving a third or fourth part off the table. So marketing is going to be a group and then economic development is, is going to be a group as well. So in our last summit, this is kind of the conclusion, the key themes that we walked away with. This is what everybody came up with. I think everybody was there. Was anybody not at the last summit that's the first time here? Okay. And I would also mention that a lot of those findings are in detail in the white paper that was provided to you. And this is just sort of the eight themes that came out of that. But the, the detail is in your packet. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to run through this very quickly. And then if you're thinking, there's one that's just not up there. And it's, it's got to be up there. It's a key that should be up there. Um, then we'll add it to our list here and add it to that. But we really tried to cull it down into what were the top um, eight or so that, that mattered. And so one, I think the, the biggest thing that we walked out of the last summit with was uh, we're stronger as a region. Uh, everybody raised their hand to meet again, which was very encouraging to us who put it on, uh, that we think moving forward, combining our assets and going out into the world and presenting uh, southern Vermont and, and the shires of Vermont uh, is a strong region. Uh, entrepreneurial building, and Bill talked a little bit about that, um, coordinated regional approach to economic development, and BCIC and RC will uh, talk a little bit more about that moving forward. Better workforce housing, so it wasn't so much around affordable housing, but really what do young professionals moving into the area uh, uh, want in their housing structure? Culture and arts infrastructure, that we are at a hub. Uh, of great um, artisanal development, and so how do we infuse the region with some culture and arts infrastructure? Uh, education and workforce development and training, so we need the workforce here. Once we get them here, we have to make sure that they're continuing to uh, advance in their development so that we have a robust uh, workforce, and also we're looking at some of the schooling systems, so grammar on up through higher ed, uh, kind of what I like to call cradle to career. We should have kind of a cradle to career pipeline. Um, regional approach to marketing, that was obviously a big one that percolated up. Um, child care and adult care. And then infrastructure improvement, physical communication, so everything from telecommunications, Wi-Fi, to roads, trains, buses that sort of thing. Anything that you think we left off that list that just has to be up there? Nothing we burned. Which is good, which means we actually did our job correctly and hopefully we summarized it very well. Okay, well good. So that's kind of how we're going to enter into our, yep. Just one question. Yep. Um, is, is the development and production of food uh, fit in anywhere because we do have a lot of artisanal food producers and I think that could add to the economic development of the area. Yeah, and a great history of that too, our agricultural and food. 
come out, I think also, it would be, I, I don't know exactly how to say this, but um, forming a community, forming a group, getting over lines and barriers involves gathering and talking and building a story and a conversation so that we have a sense of who we are. And okay. then, so, so somewhere. Like uh, heritage and history? Yeah, well, yes, but it's also what we are, our what story. we are and what we're doing, what our story is. That, that's the meaning mm -hmm. piece. I mean, there's just, so, so I don't. I'll, I'll add it and around kind of meaning, culture, mm -hmm. story development. It's not something you can hire somebody else to do for you. You do it, you know, you do it as part of the work of uh, what we're doing. And also, for more detail, if you look on page two, the things that bind north and south together, there's actually 30 items that sort of help encompass uh, all the things that we talked about for this summit. Anything else? Again, this is just kind of a jumping in point. I'm sure, I mean, our hope is that as we mature as the two groups move forward, you're building that list too. So in that marketing group, there may be this really robust story that emerges that, you know, a proud past and a vibrant future, and how do we tell that story? Yeah. Matt, it's more a, an issue of clarification, and maybe I, I'm the only one who's thinking it, but last time, we use the word, as a word person, we use the word region for everything we say. And it doesn't always mean the same thing. So going forward, uh, maybe when we're referring to the large region versus the southwest region, I don't know how you differentiate, but I think it's important when you're driving the conversation which region you're talking about. Okay. And I don't know how we do that in the, tech, in the context of the themes, but I think it gets confusing. Regional definition discussion or something like that. Again, I just don't want to lose it, so. No. Anything else? Okay, so that's at least a good jumping in point. Um, so that's kind of handles our recap. I do want to pass it off to uh, Jonathan Cooper. You're going to come up and lead us through some of what BCIC, BCRC have been working on. Uh, we thought this was very important because there really is kind of a robust plan that's being developed, and, and Sonny's part of that, and a couple other people in the room. Um, so I think that would be good education as we jump into the groups uh, after that. So come on up, John Cooper. Hello, everyone. I haven't had a chance to meet all of you. Um, I've been in Bennington, Vermont, living there since September 1st. Um, I was hired to balance up Bill's long tenure as a ninth generationer to be brand new um, to the area. So, um, to get somewhere in the middle. Um, the section that we'll talk about today has sort of two parts. The first is to, to discuss some of what's going on now um, that pertains to economic development, which should be seen you know, in a, a more expansive way than perhaps has been in the past. And the second is to address some of those regional questions that sort of just came up, um, looking at how this sort of broader region has sort of come about and what the process is for us um, here in Bennington County um, in the near term and into the immediate term. So I think it's useful to start with a sort of conceptual overview of um, sort of a newer approach, something that we've seen um, taking hold elsewhere around the country. Um, here in Vermont, it's really something that makes sense here where we are in Bennington County. Um, the sense of economic hunting and economic gardening. In the past, there had been what you would call big game hunting, as um, economies were based on one or two large industries, and that's, um, nowadays that involves bringing industries in oftentimes, which requires essentially a race to the bottom to decide how much of the benefit of bringing in a big employer, a, you know, uh, big manufacturer, distributor, what have you, how much of the benefit of bringing that in are you willing to give up or give away in the form of tax breaks, in the form of um, level of service, infrastructural upgrades, um, things that municipalities and, and counties or other um, legislative bodies sometimes enact in order to uh, sweeten the deal for what is outside of the region. Um, in addition to requiring entities to spend a little bit of capital that way, it also um, highlights or underlines a, set, a, a notion that 
that what is here isn't enough. And in order to make something whole, we need to look beyond the borders. Um, the notion of economic gardening attempts to resolve um, growth in an internal manner. Um, so growing what you have and uh, making use of what's available. The implication there is that um, a lot of our resources then get focused on some of the small businesses, the smaller businesses that exist in the area. And so in the economic gardening you know, parlance, these are the gazelles um, that you want to get a herd. Um, a herd is much more capable of losing one or two individual animals than a, um, than a any sort of like big game element where you have two whales and if one goes, you have you are down 50% of your whale. Um, so what that means is that some of the tools that we use are slightly different in their um, in the in the audience they're intended for. Um, so we see a lot of effort going into some of that entrepreneurial activity, those early businesses in those first few years that are um, working towards say um, profitability year on year. So there's a lot of information sharing, um, mentoring relationships. We have co-working spaces such as the Lightning Jar, and as an example in Bennington County, um, where there are sort of infrastructural needs that can be met um, by you know, without having to acquire you know, some of the telecommunication elements. There's a, a number of ways in which um, we can leverage partnerships with the state, and I'm very delighted to have Zena Paddock of the Vermont Small Business Development Center here with us today. Um, he made the trip out from his spot in Brattleboro, um, and our area business um, advisor. Oh, I okay. I, I have an indoor voice. I can use an outdoor one. Is this better? Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully, I have something useful to say. And um, I, I was playing the long con. Um, so so we have our sort of our partners um, through state elements, through the Agency of Commerce, Community Development, and through. Um, Vermont Small Business Development Center. We try to bring their resources to bear in our, um, in our business community, and we are sort of focusing on those smaller scale enterprises. So this, as you can see, the most important thing to look at here is that the list ends at the bottom, not because it is a complete list or an exhaustive list of the contributors to economic development in the area, but because there's only so much space that we have with the projector. Um, municipalities, for example, which I didn't include here, not to leave them out, but simply towns of Manchester, Dorset, uh, Bennington, Pownall have substantial roles to play in economic development. But sort of what I want to focus on here was that other contributors that haven't necessarily been seen as contributors to economic development are very much a part of ongoing work in the socioeconomic fabric of, of, the, of the region, of Bennington, in, in and around Bennington County. So we have some of the old yard, or the, the usual suspects, the Bennington County Regional Commission, Bennington County Industrial Corporation, we have our other regional elements like the Shires of Vermont, RMO, but we have other elements. You see from Southwestern Vermont Healthcare, we see North Shire Grows, we have the Vermont Arts Exchange, you know, sort of running through the entirety of our industry sectors, um, you know, from utilities, to construction, to um, arts, culture, recreation, and sort of everywhere in between. So what I wanted to do here for the next few slides is to sort of look at some of these categories of economic development and just as an example um, to see what, what some of these um, results are, what's going on now, and to see some of the elements or entities that are you know, taking part. So for instance, one of the bread and butter elements of economic development is like development planning strategies. Um, so something from earlier this year, the North Shire Economic Development Strategy, Sort of, uh, results of product of work from BCRC and the NED Steering Committee. Um, so looking at Manchester, Manchester Village, Dorset, so we had municipal officials, we had some community members who are part of the steering committee producing a, uh, an in-depth sort of action plan um, for uh, some economic development um, in the years to come. And another well-known sort of uh, traditional piece of economic development we have some bricks and mortar, you know, revitalization of um, vacant or underused space in a downtown area. So here BCRC is sort of working in partnership with the Bennington Redevelopment Group, a broad array of several um, entities in and around Bennington, um, Bennington College, Southern Vermont College, the Bank of Bennington, um, Southwest Vermont Healthcare. We have a lot of sort of pillars of communities sort of coming together to work on a re redevelopment of the Putnam blocks within the downtown of Bennington 
Um, so this is another one of those traditional um, economic development activities, but in this instance we see a lot of public-private partnerships sort of taking hold um, to bring things to bear. Um, something that Matt had referred to in his remarks uh, pertaining to this workforce pipeline, uh, the Bennington County Industrial Corporation has a long and um, robust history of work in the workforce development element through its um, Workforce and Education Committee, uh, which includes um, representatives from CCD Bennington, from Southern Vermont College, uh, legislators, um, and so we see that sort of functioning with the BCIC. In this instance, we're referring to an internship program, uh, an internship program that is of value both to the interns themselves, but to the members of the business community to make the most out of the opportunity to have an intern. So there requires some education on both parts, and this is you know not merely focused on. Um, some traditional interns. It also is able to a program is able to accommodate uh, non-traditional students, uh, non-traditional participants. Um, so this is just looking at one area. But as Matt mentioned, we have um, the workforce and education committee is doing work. Seed Leaks program, the Southshire Challenge, um, all the way through high school and into those um, early collegiate and uh, post-collegiate years. A growing element has been some entrepreneurship where elements like the Small Business Development Center, um, the Lightning Jar uh, are working in concert to provide a lot of opportunities for, and with other sponsors, at the bottom of this particular in entity, we see some sponsors for a, an event that took place at the Bennington Museum uh, last month. I think a number of you may have been in attendance there. Uh, bring in the Alchemist, um, some of the, um, the business owners, that rather successful operation. But uh, the Bennington Unprofessionals took part in sponsoring the event, the Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, BSECU. So there's an awful lot of um, people devoting some of the time, talent, and treasure to those smaller businesses. Uh, this particular event had people from all over the Northeast, uh, Pennsylvania, et cetera, um, to hear a, a pretty special story about um, a Vermont product that you know, where the entrepreneurs had to overcome a lot of obstacles and uh, make it take a lot of risks, but at the right time and with sort of the right the right focus and drive. Um, housing has come up as a increasingly relevant economic development issue, and something I'd like to mention here is Southwestern Vermont Healthcare's work in the um, for healthy homes, for Bennington um, initiative. Uh, that's understanding that real estate deals aren't necessarily going to be um, aren't always don't always take place with community development at heart and this is an, an intent to bring in um, homeowners to make homeowners out of some, some properties that are not at uh, peak capacity to renovate those properties and to assist homeowners with being able to become contributing members to their socioeconomic fabric working and living in the downtown um, this partnership this initiative has been going on now um, it's relatively new and it's a rather exciting one something that um, brings the notion of a really brings the socioeconomic part, the social part of socioeconomic fabric to bear. Um, another comment came up was about food systems. And um, glad to see Ms. Ruffa of North Shire Grows here with us. Um, North Shire Grows and the BCRC uh, partnered to find $30,000 from the USDA uh, to fund some work. And it's been, um, and Liz has been, you know, North Shire Grows has been doing a lot of excellent work for years now. and is a Exciting merging with Food Connect? Food Connect. Food Connect. Wyndham, County. Wyndham County. So there's a chance that we have these opportunities for growth and for contribution um, in region and then in neighboring regions. Um, but this is something that is about access to local food. So we have distribution mechanisms, we have um, growth mechanisms. It's something that pairs well. And certainly, um, it should be mentioned that uh, Paddock is our agri state's agribusiness industry um, sort of specialist, so he brings an awful lot of knowledge in that field. So this is something we see food systems having a lot of assets um, in our county. Um, you could pick just about any place on the map and find some arts and culture to talk about. Um, something that I want to just briefly mention here was an example of an event, uh, the, the explosion, um, in place in Bennington earlier this year. That's BCR's work with the Bronx Arts Exchange, Shire's Vermont RMO, um, spending you know, a day bringing in artisans, craftspeople from within the county and outside the county. Um, and there are many more cultural festivals, etc., just like this, um, all throughout you know, the Shires. And um, this sort of 
brings a lot of eyes and um, a lot of loose change. Financing to some of our um, robust arts and cultural elements uh, throughout, um, throughout the county. And so the last portion of this first stretch pertains to public outreach, uh, something that is vital to the BCRC, Shires, BCIC, something like today's event. There is the handsome email that I hope you all received in your handsome smartphones and inboxes. But this is a, a, a key element to spurring that regional economic development conversation and making sure that there is an awareness of what the intentions are, the roles that each of us would play in bringing those intentions to bear. Um, and so part of the handout that you have today, um, the white paper is about five pages, but after that, um, there are some sort of landscape-oriented pages that pertain to the section that I'll be sort of addressing right now, which is getting a handle on this southern Vermont zone. We're going through this. Um, with you know a little bit of um, not, not too much detail, but to get a handle on, on what it is, where it came from, where it's supposed to go, um, and it's exciting to have uh, Sunny Barati, if you haven't just to meet her, of the BDCC, the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, who is taking on the Southern Vermont Economy Project. She's been out here for a number of events, and we're glad to have her back here today. Um, you're not too far away from your 10-minute break, I promise, and you can say hello to her then. Um, but, so we have 44 towns and villages. Um, it is the entirety of Wyndham County and Bennington County, plus the very lucky town of Weston, Vermont. Uh, they're the, the sort of northern bump. Um, you have about 82,000 people in this area. And there are some shared challenges about uh, population, um, the demographic aging, population decline, um, the rates at which the uh, tourism industries were covered from recession, were relatively similar and they lagged far behind the rest of Vermont. Um, but also some common characteristics of um, some more of those social and cultural elements as well. It isn't just about challenges, it's also about um, features. And even some interesting demographic features in that both counties have their population center relatively close to the southern end. Both counties have another population center closer to the northern end. And so we have some interesting balance, and, and both of those take place along the western and eastern borders of those regions. Um, and so a committee was formed, as Bill mentioned, the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone Committee, and uh, produced a report at the end of 2015. Um, and this committee was you know, a good example of what committees are meant to do, how they're supposed to look, and what their um, focus should be. Um, as on that first page there, this handout, we see those nine members, and the balance is tilted towards the private sector. Um, there's a geographic and professional balance, as you can see, through some of the public entities that we have representatives from the Planning Commission, from the Wyndham Regional Commission, the County Regional Commission, representation from the Economic Development Organizations, BCIC, BCC, um, and then some representatives from a number of industries um, throughout the state, or I'm sorry, throughout the Southern Vermont region, um, that these committees need to demonstrate, sort of at, at a glance, that there is a sort of full and fair representation, and that the main you know, economic interests of a region are met um, and can be adequately assessed by members of the committee. Um, so they aren't all from the biggest town, they're not all from the richest town, they're not all from the oldest town, they're not all from the oldest families, they're not all from the most well-placed people. I mean, it's, it needs to be something that um, is relatable uh, for all 82,000 residents. So from that, there came a number of recommendations that are there on the bottom of that first page, uh, two of which I sort of had bolded there. One was to embark upon the creation of the comprehensive economic development strategy. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. The uh, second was to implement a sustainable marketing, uh, a sustainable recruitment and marketing project. Um, coming back from the legislative session, the economic development strategy uh, recommendation received some appropriations, uh, sort of a one-time deal, and that is sort of something we look at more on the second page here. Um, and this is sort of what BCRC was given a, a list, you know, five tasks, the first four of which pertain just to us, um, just here in Bennington County. And it was, first step is 
conducting that inventory of critical assets, um, and that is not just your biggest employers. That's something that reaches far beyond into some of those more um, the nooks and crannies of the community. Um, second was to form another steering committee that's consistent with um, the Economic Development Administration, the federal entity that oversees that comprehensive economic development strategy, um, to guide that economic development work, to really pull on the, uh, draw from the, um, sort of the, some of the known quantities in our communities, um, individuals who have the commitment and focus, um, experience to be a part of an initiative like this. And the third step is to make sure everyone knows what that requires. And not just members of the committee, but towns, you know, town officials, the private sector, to understand that a SEDS process is a process of self-discovery and a process of transformation. Um, and that is about as, um, that takes a lot of work. And it's about, it takes about as much work as that would sound like. Um, so a process of, of you know, self-assessments and transformation. Um, and then it's vital that we build public support for this process. So events like today are sort of beginnings for us trying to reach out and discuss what this process looks like, um, how we'd be a part of it, how the public is a vital part of it. And finally, we're hoping to take care of this sort of perhaps in May or so of 2017. This is when we sort of get back in touch or join up with Wyndham County uh, the Wyndham Commission, the Wyndham Regional Commission, BDCC, to host this Southern Vermont Economic Development Summit to discuss some of the success stories we've seen um, in our respective parts of Southern Vermont and to really begin to lay the foundation for a fully fledged SEDS process um, that would run us through about 2018 um, and sort of presenting to the uh, Economic Development Administration a, a document that sort of guides our growth, our intent. Um, for all of Southern Vermont. Our sort of final segment here then is to talk a bit about what that said stuff is. Um, you know, so that's on the final page. There's a number, there's a lot of, um, maybe some boilerplates, but it's something that we're sort of looking at here just on the, the big picture. So, that we have a, a region-wide plan, and this is, you know, about assets. It's not about saying, well, let's be something that we can't be. It's not saying we have the new Silicon Valley, it's the bat and kill the loom sick Silicon Valley. It, it, it's, it's talking about the assets that we have and what they can become. Um, and this is where that story, that narrative needs to be created and that's where public participation is crucial. Um, and part of the reason that we discuss regions as much as we do um, is that you'll all be as tired of that word as, as I am, having been to a regional planning program, you hear the word a lot. And it's partially because the EDA, their regulations view regional collaboration as a necessary component to this sort of robust and comprehensive economic development work. Um, we need to be innovative with the things that we have, and we need to partner with you know, a region like Southern like Wyndham County to make the best of the things that we both bring to the table. This requires a vision that is about both the external trends that we see around us and the ones that are sussing out the fads from the facts, and then the internal characteristics, the things that are true about the region and, and their strengths, weaknesses, um, and so that is sort of one of the entry points um, to getting at something called, as I'm sure many of you familiar with sort of that robust sort of SWOT analysis of strengths and weaknesses as internal characteristics, opportunities and threats as contextual characteristics. And in so doing, you know, and sort of the final piece there is to assess, well, how, how have we done? How will we know if we have a successful product or not? We must identify some performance measures to get a handle on the implementation and then the impacts. Um, where these are done well, they are readable, useful documents, not just for policy wonks or for uh, bee encounters. I, two groups of people I greatly admire, um, and, but rather to everybody. That reflects who you are, reflects what's to come, and it makes the best case for the best outcomes. Um, so I think what we can 
Um, on that optimistic note, we can sort of go into, I thank you all for your attention. Um, I don't know if there's any sort of additional wrap up you'd like to bring about. Well, we've got, a, we've definitely got some time, so maybe just Q&A and, yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan um, in communities that have been really effective at creating SEDs, have they actually shown economic growth as a result of it? And, and the second follow-up question to that is it's so hard to crystal ball the future. And in some regards, these SEDs lay out some of that. When, for those communities that have been successful post-development of the SEDs, was the SEDs actually directionally correct at where they should put their efforts? I think that the first part is that um, the EDA directs a lot of its um, attention to economically distressed areas. Um, and so that's, which is a, a, not necessarily an exclusive definition, but it is, uh, so we, what we see are, um, a lot of times the, the impact of the SEDS is to redirect, coordinate efforts in a way that, um, while not necessarily being about increased economic outcome, be about shifting, you know, trends, downward trends. Um, I believe now, for example, um, the a good an example that we'll be looking at a great deal will be the the Wyndham Regional says they they completed one, um, and again the Wyndham County area geographically demographically too small, um, which is why teachers will have this regional collaboration between Wyndham and Bennington County, um, but they're identifying trends about pertaining to growth of, um, I guess you would say, green building and other um, sort of, uh, environmental products. That is something that, that was a, a pretty wise and sensible um, assessment. And it's guided some of the growth, I think, since 2014. Um, and there's been some real successes there, drawing in federal um, support for um, developing those ideas, bringing those things to bear. Um, by and large, the the successful SEDS is the one that makes sense to all the people that read it, and that includes the um, federal entities that then are able to um, disperse funds to encourage um, implementation. And, um, and that's where well done. Um, they, they can make a substantial difference. I know in upstate New York, um, a lot of um, smaller towns that have or had large um, <coughs> manufacturing concerns have been able to get um, a good deal of traction in some of the shifting away from the the Alstoms and the uh, bombardiers, uh, bombardiers of the economies and finding ways to use some of that space to um, some of that vacant or um, available space to inculcate newer econ newer industries and it's um, met with a good deal of success to be honest. John, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but part of the, the, and what you mentioned was, the more closely we can align and present a doable plan to the federal government, the more monies flow into Southern Vermont, and does that make sense? And that kind of was what we talked about, kind of from a Shires group, and, and Bill, and you talked to us, kind of saying, look, part of the alignment here between and let's create that region and that region and then let's work together as kind of co-regions is that we're going before eventually a, a federal government and we have a good robust plan and therefore they say you have a good plan on the table here's money to execute that yeah and it's and it's not um they aren't vast <coughs> sums but the the gist of it is that hey there's a designation as an economic development district you have the uh, personnel that's and have the sort of full-time job of overseeing the implementation of those goals. And it is sort of aligning um, a lot of your goals in a way that matches up clearly with the ways in which um, some entities with the funding to disperse assess the, um, the, the fitness of those, um, of those plans. So it, it really is sort of doing a lot of legwork to make sure that you are well positioned for the opportunities that will come um, from some of that legwork. 
The way when you met with the Shires in, in layman's terms, the way that you guys described it to us <laughs> was that Brattleboro has, has created their sets, but they are not big enough population or dollar wise to qualify for a federal district by themselves. So they need to partner with somebody. And so if Bennington County creates a SEDS, combining our SEDS with Wyndham County, we then qualify for a federal designated district, which allows federal dollars to roll in. So Brattleboro or Wyndham County has already completed this task, and we need to kind of put the mirror image together so that together we benefit from the, the federal <coughs> government. There's just a few things to, I think that's um, broad brush strokes definitely. There, there is the need to, you know, for some of the demographic reasons, to have that partnership. But it's um, important to, to acknowledge that it won't be the case that Bennington County creates a SEDS and then the two are just sort of, um, you know, put together. Rather, one SEDS for Southern Vermont, for the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone emerges. Um, what we're taking, what we're working on here in Bennington County over the next months, what we've been doing with this, with that work plan for 27, FY 2017, has been about building up our capacity to be a full partner. Um, that Wyndham's, uh, that the, the SEDS, that's the, um, the, you know, has, has sort of evolved and come together in Wyndham County, um, sort of the work of the Southeast Vermont Economic Development Strategies Group, they began talking in 2007 about um, internet connectivity, and it evolved from there in a very organic process. So some things can take a while to come together, and as it is now, so this conversation has been going on for almost a decade there, and so it isn't the case that we're going to push through in the next six months, um, but rather that, that we're adding in, putting together all the things that we'll need to be a full partner um, that has the buy-in from the public, that has the buy-in from um, the private sector, from our town officials, and from, you know, we have our steering committee in place, that we have the actors ready to partake in what comes, what comes next. And then that allows the federal dollars to flow to both regions. And, 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 yeah, and then we're, we are in a, um, we, have, we have met the requirements to be relevant in this end. Yeah. Wait, please. It strikes me that um, if you look at the previous examples of SEDS and their successes. The ones that are in desperate, desperate counties or areas have a terrible job getting change to be made to go back to your point. We are in the fortunate position that we're not that far down. We already have a diverse economy. We already have agriculture. We already have resorts and, and, uh, and, and arts and culture. We have manufacturing. We have colleges, et cetera, et cetera. So we are in a we're in a plateau. We're not we're not in a place where we're sinking rapidly. And the benefit, it seems to me, having worked with that zone committee for a year, um, is to start to integrate and and the and coordinate these many well-intentioned efforts that are, I counted 26 uh, when we went through the zone work that are doing some version of economic development or marketing. And to coordinate that into something that has scale, and as was pointed out, attracts some federal dollars in a state that is taxed out, seems to me to be a pretty decent opportunity. Um, and I know that that's something that's exciting that your work has really been about getting a handle on um, that, that inventory of who is something what and where. Yeah, largely my work is to map out what's happening in the two counties and to do that larger scale assessment to see who's doing that type of work and how they're working with or against each other and then taking all that information and sharing it back out to the community so that, that both counties can start to set some priorities around moving, moving forward. I, do we have, given that we just have had a major election, do we have any sense about the availability of the federal dollars that we're sort of loosely talking about over the next four or five years? <laughs> let's, let's talk loosely. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. I'm not sure I really have, yeah. I don't have a sense. I don't know if anybody here feels like they uh, Certainly no one has a crystal ball, but if I were in a social justice organization, I'd be scared to death. Being an economic development organization might be a different situation. Yeah. 
and also in a rural area, um, it, yeah. you know, with the election results that can be affected. The other thing that's really clear is that for all of us who own businesses here, we have to do this whether or not federal money comes. So that's the silver lining. That's a great point. The, there is um, there is no downside to um, a, a this process. <laughs> there, there there is not, and so that's something that um, I think as you know, one of the things we'll be doing in the next few months, in short term, is getting into towns throughout the county, having our presentation, being able to meet with business owners individually, also in larger groups to, to discuss just some of those, um, those incidental benefits of such processes. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really critical point that, that Jill has made. We focus a lot on the kind of carrot of doing this work, which is the opening up of various funding sources to continue to do this work. Um, both from a capacity perspective and from an infrastructure perspective. I think the greatest benefit come from the partnership opportunities, the networking, the assets that are identified, and the ability to understand how to leverage them and work together um, on them uh, collaboratively is really the biggest upside from doing this work. Pooling resources requires us to know where the resources are requires us to know who owns or manages or directs those resources and build the conversation that has a shared future. I think that it's super, so the, I won't mention the election, but I'll say to me, the way that I can console myself is to recognize that I'm really privileged to live in a place where we can do what we need to do for each other and with each other because we're not mobs of people we're actually networks of communities, and relationships is what it's about. In this conversation, you know, prior to this presentation, during the Q&A, <coughs> and, and prior to that, what, I'm, what I can hear is an informed, a lot of informed perspectives, a lot of, the, a lot of relevant terminology. It's something where you know, this is a, um, a good place to do this good work by, um, by every conceivable standard. Is there anything else that you'd like to? I just want to add that, that that gives us the most amazing story, and it seems to me that a homegrown economic development program and plan that's homegrown and then home executed, whether or not it's turbocharged by outside resources, is an absolutely electrifying American story. And my feeling is right now. We need that. And so when Matt opened up talking about millennials and the need for an active, actual role that's meaningful and access um, at Bennington Potters, I'm finding that talk, you know, for instance, I just talked to a young man who'd gone on a tour, was out of college, gone on a tour of all the different potteries, and he's back knocking on our door because there's access, there's transparency, there's relationship, and there's small scale. And um, it seems to me that those are the assets that we have. And our not being siloed or separated by our mountain ranges or our distances or by winter or all of those things. And, uh, well, plus, of course, as small business people, we have two or three jobs. I mean, you know, we, we sort of basically have too much to do. That's, it seems to me, the biggest impediment that all of us have. But the, this kind of activity is really, really, really valuable and will take us where we want to go and give us an absolutely fabulous story that will give us lots of editorial marketing. So thank you, Jonathan, and BCI.